All right, welcome to another episode of The Grail. We have a fantastic guest today. Introduce yourself, my man. Hey, my name is Tay Herrera, I, uh, a.k.a. Terrera. I am a hand engraver for the last 43 years of metal, uh, mainly motorcycles uh, and uh, everything, everything in between. And uh, it's been, again, 43 years about this time too, because when right before I started high school, I just turned 17, I uh, was introduced to an engraver and uh, that's where it all started. His name was Angelo B. Was that in like a metal shop in high school? Cause I took metal shop as, or where? <laughs> uh, no, this was, my father was a custom gun maker. He made presentation cases for everybody. Uh, all the movie star celebrities, President Reagan, and he wanted to deliver a, a case he made for Sylvester Stallone that was uh, commissioned by Angelo, Angelo B, the engraver out in uh, Chatsworth. He's probably 80-something now. Anyway, I didn't want to go. Long story short, I did. And when I saw him ha using a hammer and chisel to inlay, uh, what was it? I think it was eight gold ducks into a, a pretty shotgun of Okay, time to go. I didn't want to leave. I was like, no, 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 no. What is this? Because I was an artist and I had really no direction to go at that time. And uh, I we did. We stayed a little bit and I asked him, hey, can I can I come back and just watch? And um, he said, and his broken friend, sure, we heard anytime. So I did that, and that was my first introduction to hand and grid. That is pretty much and he was uh, go ahead. Uh, that was pretty much my introduction to engraving too, where those really ornate old school guns like shotguns, 12 gauge and all of that. That's really where I first kind yeah. of did. Yeah. And that's what he did. Uh, he worked uh, in, in uh, he's a Belgian engraver for Browning. And those guys were fast. I mean, that's how they made their money. And so, like I said, I watched them for, whenever I could and he'd give me tips and a really good guy and uh uh learned a lot from the guy and I I gotta get back to the guy because uh, we we actually became friends and but it's been a long time all because my father was good friends with him now you once you start doing some engraving it's a lot like tattooing you can't just start on somebody's gun you got to practice on something and 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 figure out how to do it i mean there's so much uh detail in learning to be an engraver i mean it's insane it is very insane it, just like a tattoo artist the art is always first um and i always i'm always the one who says okay this is at the end okay this is what we're going to do and it's usually the right thing um the art comes first, and the different kinds of metals, the hardness, uh, the, the balance of the art onto the project, it keeps going. And uh, not saying it's easy for me, I'll just say it's easier. <laughs> you know, it uh, certain items I can look at, and I can say, oh, that's going to take this long. Bikes, no. That's a whole different, That's I still haven't got that. I look at a piece, and well, okay, it was going to take this long. It's always way longer. <laughs> I always want to make it better. And and that's just something that I acquired through my father. Always make it, you could do better. He was just saying that. Especially when I started, you could do better. That was his way of, of uh, lovingly saying that, come on, dude, really? <laughs> Well, so once you see that gun, do you go home and say, man, that's what I want to do? And you have to figure out, you got to get the tools and everything? Because I always thought engraving as a young person was like you saw at a watch shop. They used the gun. I had no idea that it was actually like chiseled out with hammers and chisels. Well, this was 1980. And uh, yeah. There was, there was, I think there's a machine out there called the Gravermeister, but I wasn't aware of it at the time. Um, 
But uh, like I said, Angel, that's all I use. He used a hammer like this and chisel. This is a different, this is a different uh, handle that I use, but it was very similar. And and to see that for the first time, a seventeen-year-old kid, I like again. It just it was it was this. That's what I want to do. And yeah, it was. Like, where is he hiding the machine kind of thing, too? You know, where, what's what's going on here? No, but I was witnessing it right there. It was, I, I came back the following week, and again, he just, I just watch him. And it, just inlaying the gold wire, gold wire to form uh, the ducts, because 24 karat gold wire will, put, when you put them together, will cold well once it's hammered. And that was something, <laughs> again, it was just mind-boggling. It's a fart for an art form you never, I never seen, and a very, very European. There were guys doing it here at the time, but uh, uh, yeah, there was a lot of guys doing it actually, but not like there is today. But uh, I was lucky enough to be mentored by Angelo. It, you know, after my um, <clears throat> my first introduction to uh, you know, yeah. So, inscribing a name on the back of a watch and then seeing the shotguns later on i would say in 1981 i'm uh seeing the rolling stones and you being into guitars like myself i see ron wood playing this zomitis with the with the disc fully engraved so here's my next introduction to engraving i was like wow who's doing that you know yeah uh I didn't get, I, I didn't see that till years later. Um, again, I was totally in the guns, focusing the guns. I I snapped out of it <laughs> years later. But when I saw that, the guy was good. I don't remember his name, but I think he retired. He had a specific um, uh, pattern he used on the on the uh, on the caps. I call it, and it was it was really nice. And the lettering was really good. I think he was a hammer and chisel guy too. Um, but as far as the history in him, I don't remember. But that, that was uh, that was probably my first introduction to uh, engraving on on guitars. Also, probably subconsciously got me into that to other things. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, that was uh, pretty cool. So then, of course, what my next introduction to you is, uh, of course, West Coast Choppers. I end up buying um, Mark Nelson's bike. And it has the, the uh, you know, the spade engraved. And then <laughs> I had the death dealer with the coffin. Oh, he did? <laughs> yeah. So I had all these bikes. I had the Chongo. So I had all these. And there, it was. The I didn't know that. You're the guy. Yeah. So it was like, yeah. well, I sold them later. And that, that guy, I think it's, uh, he was a tow truck driver. He bought them all. But it's funny to think about. All of a sudden, here's this next level engravings. And that was uh, an incredible thing about West Coast Choppers was everything was a total another level and and completely original. You're like, well, what are these engraved air cleaners? And, and what are these FU pipes? And what are these rims, you know, that look like fucking Batman stars? So you were part of that beautiful formula not necessarily a formula uh the beautiful flavor and and the high water mark of these choppers you know it was really like and after a while oh thanks man you would see these air cleaners passing around on on ebay for like you know 25 grand uh, you know whatever you know at the time people were crazy you know but it was different so people were definitely interested yeah how does uh how do you uh become friends with Jesse and how do you start you know does he see something and go hey can you do an air cleaner or how does this happen well there's a whole story behind that it was um I don't know if you remember when the the V Rod show came out on Discovery yeah and then it, I just saw momentum finally of uh, the motorcycle were catching traction and Jesse started monster. I go, oh, here we go. 
Uh, so I called West Coast, and you know, Jesse was huge at the time. Yeah. And you know, I got to speak to Jesse, you know, that kind of thing. And yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, get in the back of the line. Dude. Yeah, Bill Dodd's just like, eat a dick, bye. <laughs> no, as a matter of fact. So I'm skipping it, going, continuing my story. Um, I just said, hell with it. There's a, there's a show in Louisiana, Steel Pony Show. And I went out there and I had a little tube I showed everybody. And there's a lot of, yeah, okay, cool. And I, sh Tuttle's, um, it, it's everybody. And, no one saw it. So I came back and I talked to a friend of mine and Johnny Chow. And he oh, yeah. says, uh, and I told him the story and he goes, no, no, no. You need to talk to Bill Dodge. And I go, who's that? And he goes, that's the manager. Oh. So I called and I speak to Bill. Hold on. And I told him what's up. And I said, hello. <laughs> and I said, this is what I have. And, uh, I want to come down and show you what I got. Yeah, I come down. How about whenever? I don't remember. But I did, and he just looked at me and looked at them, looked at me, and went, um, we want you to go ex exclusive. And I go, wow, I didn't expect that. <laughs> sure. And I was exclusive for about two years. Right. And and then I finally met Jesse. I was I just delivered a piece to West Coast and I was walking towards my car and there's Jesse inside the gate on the east side. Right. And I said, hey man, hey, I'm I'm your guy. I'm doing great. Oh, great, cool. And uh that's how we met. Um, but he through that time, hot dog was saying, No, Bill's Bill's not the guy. He's he's the coordinator and everything, but Jesse knows who you are, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So, and over the years, we'd started doing things, and it took a while, you know, because this is all business. That's all I wanted, you know, and, but I'm a, he's a Long Beach guy. I'm kind of a Long Beach guy through Housing the Heights, and we, 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 we connected, and we respected each other, and he, he really loved my work, and I, we just want to do something different that's not, that's never been done. And sure, there was engraving on, on motorcycles, and sure, there was a guy who did it before me, and that's C.J. Allen at West Coast. But I wanted to do it different. I wanted to do sculpting. I wanted to introduce something that was badass. I'd never done it. He saw it. I said, yeah, let's do this. And we did it, and it just, it just like you said, took off. And there are times that people call me, like, do you do Jesse's work? Yeah. Do you do, did you do this piece? Yeah. So you did the piece? Yeah, what? <laughs> I mean, they really wanted just the guy who did it. And right. finally, my name, I didn't want to be, I went to kind of underground because I didn't be swamped. I had other things going on. And I just wanted to be his dude. And it worked out really good. We did a lot of lot of stuff over the years. Really, very, a lot of stuff I'm proud of. And he's just, um, he's a good dude, man. I really like the guy. Despite what, you know, I hear things, but I don't care about that. He's been great for me. Now, at what point do you hook up with Jeff Decker and start this Crocker tank? Because Jeff and I are really close. And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm having it, my entire tank done. And it, it took years, I guess. But, man, when it was done, I was like, holy shit. Well, that's the whole situation itself. But, yeah, that was... Uh... He told me to take my time on it. And all of a sudden, he wanted it done. And I did have it for a while. It turned into a thing. But uh, I think I I introduced myself through Mark Nelson oh, yeah. at West Coast. And he introduced me and said, I want to do this tank. And OK, let's do it. And that was, that was you know, you hear the story where you you, you make more money if you, if you ask for, would you like fries for that meal? That's what, that was totally. Because I kept going, I kept going. Let's do this and then that. That was enormous. I couldn't tell you how many hours. I couldn't, but it came out awesome. Oh man, how long did that take you to do? It's an entire. Like I said, I don't know, man. I don't oh. know. I just saw this vision in my head, and I had to put it in. And again, I don't care what the, how long it took. And apparently, he did. And it just, I, I, I get it, but uh, 
it wasn't where I wanted. Let's do this. Let's try that. And that stuff's never been done, you know? And I didn't want to give it a half-assed job to any of my work, so. Did you do the Brad Pitt bike, the entire bike? At first, you just yeah. did the engine, right? And then he, Brad contacted you and wanted the whole bike done? I never talked to Brad. Oh. This is all a, a Paul Cox thing, but you are right. Um, no, I, that's a funny story. Paul Paul called me up and says, I got this uh, this guy and he wants this engraved uh, bike and he wants a lot of work. And who is it? Oh, I can't tell you. Can you tell me? No, no. no. And it's a crazy story because I was I used to listen to a lot. Remember Pirate Radio? Oh yeah. I was I was I was tapping away and I was my mind was going. I heard this call call you call in now and you can win Billy Joel tickets to um to uh, the forum. <laughs> Hello, you are the winner. What? All right. So I won tickets. I never went. I was just thinking about selling them, you know. So, but then I get a call three months later. You are the grand prize winner of um, oh, to see Billy Joel at Madison Square Garden. Oh, I, wow. And in the background, you hear people, yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I never knew that was part of the gig. So I'm going, what do you have to say? Yeah, all right. You know what you say? I don't know. So um, I called Paul. I said, I'm off to New York. He said, what? He says, great. That's awesome. I get to show you what's going on. And I told him how he was, he was Billy Joel. Billy? Dude, it is what it is. So my friend of mine in New York, we went to the concert. A friend of mine who was here, I flew her out to see her brother uh, who went to NYC. And it was a real, it was really cool. Anyway, once we're there, he entered, he showed me the bike and oh, this is really cool. And he wants Art Deco. Art Deco. All right. Well, really? That's this who is it? You know, Brad Pitt. Oh, okay. Art Deco. So I, I thought of, I just, I, you know, Art Nouveau, I'm a big fan of, but Art Deco, okay? That's going to be complicated. I'm going to have to create some stuff. <clears throat> so, um, so uh, I called him, I called him up after I got back and I said, hey, um, I, what what do you have? And he says, uh, well, we just have the rocker buckets for right now. And let's just keep it at that. Cool. So I did that. They made the bike. I think that the, the paint was off or something. I was at the Indian Larry uh, Legacy uh, block party they had out in Sturgis, and I went out there. And I saw the bike for the first time, because, yeah, they want the paint on. Brad wants the paint on. And I said, for whatever reason. But he likes the rocker so much, he wants the entire, entire thing. And I said, awesome. That's going to be cool. That's going to be a lot of artwork and a lot of this, and and this is what he wants. And uh, it was it was really interesting because at that time he was married to Angelina, and uh, her name and uh, six kids. I don't know their names are hidden in the bike, and only one can you really spot. And when you're on the bike and you look down, you, know, you can see it. But I won't say what it is. But I do a lot of that anyway. But it was his suggestion. So uh, yeah, we did. I did the. I did everything. When I saw that bike, uh, I think it's. I saw it at Sturgis. I think it's my favorite bike out of all the bikes that were made. It's there was just something about it: the root beer, the engraving, the handlebar setup, you know. And then when they did that GQ photo shoot of him riding it and everything, it was Northern just, California, yeah, yeah, just the perfect. Perfect setup chopper, you know. It was just that's it. That's the yeah. chopper, man. Mid yeah, it's, well, it's, it's in the Larry, you know. Yeah, totally. It's, Baby apes, awesome. It's, it's a beautiful bike, and to see it uh, in Sturgis before they took it apart again, it was it was it was beautiful. Um, uh, I'm just surprised that they don't. He doesn't show it. Um, you know, there's. He was at. Uh, I think he was. Brad was at. Uh, no, excuse me. Uh, the show out in Irvine. He was oh, yeah. there. What is that board? Oh, that board. Board free, yeah. And a couple of years ago, and 
I wanted, I didn't see him, but I heard he was there. And I wanted to ask him, why, why aren't you showing the bike? What's the deal? Yeah. But, I don't know. It's that's that kind of sucks. So once he wants the whole bike done, Paul has to take the whole thing apart. And then what? Does he ship you the frame and the forks and everything? I didn't do the, I didn't do the frame. I did the parts. Right. I did the parts. Yeah. Uh, the forks, everything, the transmission cover, um, the uh, the headlight was custom made, I believe. And again, he wanted Art Deco. But then he started changing his mind. He says, he's, he's, I guess he wanted, he saw my work. He says, can you add cogs? Can you do... Can you with with the Art Deco and this and any other one? Yeah, okay, let's do that. And if you look at the headlight, that was really really a cool moment. I have some chevrons right down the middle, and uh, scrolled in the back. I have uh, cogs and then and the flames coming from that. Um, it was a really interesting and fun piece uh, that I'm very proud of. Yeah, that came out. That that came out, and some of the stuff that came out of my head is like. Wow, and there is a story on top of the rocket boxes, which I'm not telling anybody, but there is a story there. If you look right on top there, you see the uh, it says something, which uh, kind of personal, but it 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 is very cool, and I'm again very proud of it. When you're working on something like that, I mean, you're you're what 43 years in or something, you said, and obviously you probably work at your house. I'm not sure, but. Get, where do you, studio. Oh, studio. You got a studio you get to? Yeah. When you when you get to the place, man, is it an eight hour day or do you work five? Are your hands just tore up? It all depends. It all depends. Like like, you know, I'm doing a frame for Jesse now. Uh engraving a frame from now. And it's taken a while because I'm having issues with my thumb. I'm 60 years old last week. And my shoulder's kind of going out and it's not what it used to be, you know. And I could never, this is my last frame I'm ever doing. It's way, way, you know, you got to maneuver crap. And let's say the the, the the long tube in the very bottom, it's it's stainless. So it's very heavy as well as this, you know, it's, it's very, it's just too much weight. You, know, you, you want to do one end and the other, end's, the, other end's hang, the other end is hanging off and you have to develop. A, I, a friend of mine, Joe, uh, he helped me develop uh a way a vice to work hold those giant pieces but again it's just it's just too much everything everything is done in quarters because unlike a let's say a, a rifle you, you, you could do a, a, a scroll in one shot but because it's you know it's 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 held down in a specific area you could only do let's say a quarter of the side you can't do a whole scroll and it just you do one side, one side, you do the whole thing, then you tilt it and it stays and you do it. It's just, it's just so much time. Um, it's, and like I said, it's, it's, I'm getting older now. I don't want to do large pieces like that anymore. I actually have done. Does that worry you? Because I mean, you, you'll probably have to just switch to maybe guns. And wow. Good question. Yeah. Um, there's a I, I I did a job for a guy and he gave me some extra cash and I thought you know I want to take a pastel class for whatever reason I don't remember what it was about three years ago so I went to Morro Bay and I took the class and there's this the teacher was a young guy probably forty years old and uh, he would always teach in the class he was like this and you see him just bent over and in pain. Uh, and I asked him, what's going on? He says, man, I've been having this for a while, blah, blah, blah. In other words, you got to work through it. You know, uh, I'm not in that situation where he is. And he's he's 40. So, yes, I am going smaller. I, I, I uh, uh, Slides or pistols and so forth. Um, and I'm getting into repose as well. You familiar with repose? That's when, uh, here's a piece I did. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, yeah. But it's, I uh, yeah. call it the uh, James Brown Cup. Yeah. That's some <laughs> Robert <laughs> Plant right there. <laughs> That's true, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, anybody remember Lambda? <laughs> 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 I 
That's right. I just happened to see James Brown clip last night. That's what he reminded me. But yeah, of course, Robert. Um, but when you do is you hammer, the, this was flat, and you hammer from the opposite side. And it projects this, projects its image. And it's, it's just, this is, this is silver. Wow. And look at the undercuts here. Yeah. It's beautiful. Pretty crazy. Look at so that. So I'm really interested in that and jewelry as well. I've done some pieces um, or this, I did something like this and I put that out last year. That's all hand engraved. Wow. So the smaller, the better. And I think that's the direction I'm going. Yeah, you know, a lot of that jewelry is red hot. I mean, you know, starting way back with Chrome Hearts and then Bill Wall and then, of course. Bill Wall, yeah. Yeah, Bill Wall. He's a good friend then, of mine. Yeah, I love Bill Wall. And then Good Art, all those guys. And, of course, the uh, the original guy, what was his name? Um, Gabor. Gabor. There you go. Man, old old school 80s Hollywood. People are like, you got a Gabor chain. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? That was crazy, right? It is. Uh, well, there's a lot of imitations of Gabor work, too, you see. Of course, it's going to happen. Um, there's a whole story how Bill Wall, was, I don't really remember, but uh, how Bill Wall was good friends with Gabor, and that's how it started. Um, Travis Walker, too. He was involved with the Bill Wall. He did his own thing. He's doing great work right now. He yeah. actually took my class uh, last year, engraving class. I've been friends with Travis. I don't know if you know Travis, Travis yeah. Walker. Yeah. He took my class last year, and we just had a blast. And uh, too bad he doesn't look closer. We'd be definitely hanging out. So you got you have uh, you teach also. Mm -hmm. And where do you teach at your studio or online? Yeah, yeah, in Costa Mesa. Wow, that's, uh, that's something I didn't want to do for a while. Did it? Did not That was kind of a. Um, there was a friend of mine, C.J. Allen, who was a motorcycle engraver for for years, and. I respect the hell out of that guy. He passed away uh, two years ago, um, but he taught. And I was thinking, okay, I, I want to get a lot of calls. People are calling me. And I did old school. I called them up and I told them, hey, man, I'm getting the calls and I want your blessing on this. Because I knew he relied, you know, right. on, on, on that gig. So. He says, he said, yeah, yeah, man, you got it. You got it. So I thought, okay. And that's waited two years after that before I really started thinking about it again. And then he passed away. So I called his, I called his daughter uh, and I told her what's going on. I told her that story. And she goes, yeah, you do it, do it. So um, I, I'm doing it. I'm, it's just a side thing. But I really do want to pass it on. I know a lot. <laughs> I mean, it was really cool that every question that was asked, I knew. Boom, right away. But again, 43 years. Yeah. And there's just try, you know, different ways of doing the same thing. I do I really I really I really want to concentrate not only engraving, but the scroll work as well. That's very important. For people who know, because anyone can look at a piece of metal that's engraved and think. Well, that looks amazing. Okay, compared to what? How about this? Oh, that's a piece of crap. Yeah, but you have to develop an eye for that as well. And that's what I also I teach. And there's there's students who are kicking butt, and who needed that who needed that help. And I'm glad I could do that. I mean, maybe in a couple of years, they'll be breathing down my back, but uh, that's okay. You know, uh, to leave that kind of uh, lineage is just awesome what type of people are taking the classes are they people that have found you over the west coast chopper years and are interested in doing motorcycle parts or are they looking to do guns or just be an engraver a majority of them are already engravers right travis is an engraver he he went to a, a place out west out east and the other guys are are, have been engraved in a while. Another guy in Oregon, Robert. Um, uh, one guy was a West Coast dude. That's right. Uh, and but other than that, they are just involved in motorcycles who are just who want to who want to expand their knowledge. Who needs that extra push? Because YouTube videos or whatever they help, but 
it's not the same. This is what you got to do. And there's a lot of going back and forth. Uh, we'll go to my, uh, my my engraving area, and they'll get stuck on something. I'll take them to uh, my drafting table, which are steps away. We go back and forth a lot, and you need that you need that visual. And there's a lot of information being shown, and I'm and I understand that because when I first started, it was just too much, way too much. And you forget it. And you have to go through it again and again. And there are tricks around it, um, like the how to save money on the equipment. There's a lot of people who are just, you know, Angelo taught me a way of sharpening a graver that takes uh, two minutes. And there are people who are selling little devices that, uh, that uh, sell for you know a couple thousand dollars thinking you need this okay you do for a certain amount of for a certain style of engraving which is um microscopic engraving you need that really sharp point but in 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 slides and firearms motorcycle pieces especially you don't need that and some of the guys are i just spent all this money in a sharpening system well i accept tips you know <laughs> It's just, you know, it's just one of those things where um, you learn from. And, so, and that was, again, the first thing Angelo Shop told me. And I still, I still use it to say, and it's good to share. And people ask me, what is that trick? Take the class. Yeah, yeah. How do you do the engraving, let's say, of a air cleaner? Is it like a tattoo? Do you lay a stencil, a drawing onto the thing, or do you freehand it? Just I go freehand. Wow. I, 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 draw the, I draw the piece first, and sure, there's ways of doing it. Um, there's an engraver who just talked about it the other day. Um, he posted something. Well, there is. I know the way of doing it, but I'd rather, you know, say you want to copy that same thing, but yet, but, uh, but, but then on the other side, I like to draw it. Just draw it. It just makes it more artistic. If it's exactly the same, yeah, eh, looks like a machine. It, it, it does. It does. Uh, I do use a machine though. People say, "Oh, well, you know, I'm not a hammer and chisel guy, hundred percent anymore." No, I sit down more because I do have a hip problem, uh, other issues, and that's called. Uh, I use a graver meister. I also have Lindsay. I have all the equipment for people who want to learn that. Um, I was interested in uh, that really fine microscopic work years ago. Like watch was, stuff? Yeah. 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 I was totally, uh, but mine was guitar picks. I wanted to make a bunch of guitar picks. Oh, yeah. Um, and engrave those. And it, I happened to see uh, Sam Alfano, his, um, his uh, YouTube page or website. I don't remember. It must have been a website. Anyway, so I'm looking at it. And it there's an engraved penny that if you blow it up, it's nothing's perfect, but it's damn near. How the heck did he do that? This is the next generation of, of engraving. And I called him up, a um, little bit of investigation, and they called him up and I said, I want to take your class. And so, yeah, come on down. And I took it. It was in a place called uh, GRS out in, uh, out in uh, Kansas. And I took it, and the first day I could, with a machine, I couldn't even do a straight line. I'm a hammer and chisel guy. And yeah. the guy behind me, an older guy, looked like Santa Claus, was a hammer and chisel guy, too. And we're cussing. we do all say, I just spent 4,500 bucks on this thing, and look, can't even make a straight line. Neither can I. <laughs> so, so two days later, we're, we're, we finally, it finally clicked. And you got the pedal, and you got this, and you go. Uh, I already had a graver meister, but I used that for stippling. I used to work for, I used to be, uh, I'm going back and forth, I know, but I used to be Weatherby Engravers, a chief, and great Weatherby Rifles chief engraver. So I needed a machine to just crank the stippling out. So I did have the machine, but I never used it for engraving. So back to the story, two days go into it. If we finally get it, um, within the fourth day, it started to click. Fifth, uh, fifth day, I got it. I and mean, I was in Lane Gold. And doing what uh, doing the project that was required on us, and only problem was I didn't. You're you're using a microscope. You're like this, and you're it's it's like, and you're engraving like this, okay. 
And I thought, man, I don't want to spend my whole career under a microscope. Oh, and, oh dang. And I'm kind of looking at Sam while he's working, and he was, and he was doing his doing his thing, but taking a lot of breaks. And I'm thinking, man, wow, doing that for all these years, and I'm, you know, a young guy at the time. I'm thinking, no, no. I got back and I bought the, all the equipment. Anyway, so then I'm thinking, I like. I like big stuff. I like bikes. You know, that's where I want to go. I want to go in that direction. So, what do I you did. Ride, do you ride, Tay? I can't remember. You got a bike? I did. I don't have any bikes now. I have hip issues. I used to be a power lifter, and I jacked up. That's another reason I have a shoulder issue. Um, I had a one hip replacement eighteen years ago. The other one's ready to go. Um, I can't throw my 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 leg over. Right, um, but I, but I did. I love to ride. Um, it's just one of those things. Yeah, man, we're getting old. I'm 57. I'm going to be 58. Your body just fucking falls apart. You know, when you're riding all your life, like I rode, like all my life. You know, your hand from the clutch, your the throttle, and then your hip from shifting. I'm talking about. You know, I didn't own a car for I don't know something like 18 years or something. You know. When you ride every day of your life and then you do stuff like what you're doing, everything starts to fall apart. So I rode, I played guitar, <laughs> you know, I'm playing guitar, I'm riding. And after a while, you're like, my shit is broken. <laughs> you know, it's crazy, right? You just fall apart. Oh, man, it, it really hit me with my thumb the last, because of that freaking frame. I told Jesse, it's, it's like, I'm sorry it's taking so long, but. Man, this is this. Yeah, I never had issues with it. Probably because when I feel it now, when you hold the back of the headstock, you know, yeah. every, every, the neck, and that's about it. But as far as I'm, I'm, it's just it, it sucks. I have back issues as well, not as bad, but uh, everything. Yeah, sixty years old. I'm still holding up. I still engrave. I still enjoy it. That's what counts, you know, work through the pain. Um, I know lots of guys who, who have major issues who are young and, and have back issues from always sitting or not sitting correctly. I hunch over, I'm a huncher. Um, but to do it for this long still, I mean, I got a lot of years to go on that. So, and I know a lot of guys who had to give it up because of whatever reason, it's a carpal tunnel. Right. And it's my right hand, I have no issues. But that's the picking hand anyway. Yeah. Or, you know, so. What got you into guitar? Who was it? My Uncle Frank gave me a guitar at uh, oh, six years old and an acoustic. I don't know what it was, but uh, the whole family on my dad's side, not the whole family, but the majority of the family were, were guitar players. And I had the guitar, I, I never had any proper training until uh, high school. I was became friends with uh, the local band at the time in Hacienda Heights, the Whittier area. They were called No Surprise. And I used to hang out, and I used to be the roadie, and you know, I used to haul on them, you know, and I was that guy. And But I enjoyed it. I just, enjoyed being a part of that. And um, those guys would teach me a lot about you know the about uh, even power chords was the first one, and uh, getting out, getting out pentatonic scales, getting outside of the box, um, and I just uh, that's 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 how it started, and then the the bug hit me again. Um, I went to Fullerton College for a while, Fullerton JC, and I was really interested, but. In theory, but man, I had issues with that. Yeah, I just didn't get it. And I the, it. The, yeah, the modes finally clicked in about ten years ago. I didn't understand it. So somebody said, "This is, oh, that's it." <laughs> you know, yeah. thirty years later. <laughs> but I finally the, understood it. So these days, you're mostly uh, doing stuff for Jesse again. And uh, he's out there, he's doing guns and um, 
Uh, Cutlery. Yep, he's doing he's doing guns, choppers, knives, uh, cutlery. Yeah, are you doing his guns also? Um, I was in the beginning, but there's a point where it said he wanted to give me, you know, all these items. I said, I can't do it, man. You know, you go somewhere else. I, I'm not gonna get this. You know, it's a business. Yeah, and he did. He found some really cool engravers, and um, that's what. Uh, to the to the level that that he wants, there's a couple of guys that are just killing it. I I don't know. Again, that's a lot of microscopic work uh, using a loop, and that's that's fine. But I'm not there. I, I'll do the big stuff, yeah. except for friends. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> done with that. Well, I got to tell you, man, I've uh, I've loved your work since the uh, first air cleaner I ever saw, and I just still think that it's some of the uh, most unique and incredible pieces on choppers and that that era of choppers yeah what was created with all of the parts the, the full the full fucking stew you know the rims the pipes the air cleaner the grips the brimbo control all of that shit the engraved brimbo tops that shit yeah, cap, yeah. that shit that you were doing it was just epic, man, and it adds to the, the to the mystique and and the whole thing of of Long Beach, you know, West Coast Chopper. So it was yeah. really, really cool to talk to you. And I, like I said, I do think that that Brad Pitt bike is the holy grail of the choppers of that era and your work. It's just like a a rolling piece of uh, Tay masterpiece, you know. So, oh, thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I love when uh, I used to look at, when I was at No Love or whatever, and I'd be in a, uh, just looking at people who would look at the bike and then come on the other side. Whoa, look at that air cleaner. Yeah, yeah. The Death Dealer one, the coffin. Awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. That, awesome. was, uh, that's, uh, that was a really good time. Hell yeah, man. Well, I uh, hope to see you. I, I, I don't know if you're into comedy, but I'm doing Irvine Improv December uh, like 20th. If you want to come see some comedy, I'll put you on the list, man. Come out and get some. Abs ab absolutely, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I love Bill. And then just discovered your friends with him. Yeah. And uh, I was checking some of your uh, some of your your uh, past podcasts. And wow, you have some heavy hitters. Why are you asking this guy? <laughs> yeah, well, you, you know, I I love to feature you know, artisans and maker, you know, people like yourself that that have inspired me over the years of like, look at like, you know, anybody can just go to Harley Davidson and buy a fucking motorcycle. But at the end of the day, you want something that nobody else has. May it be an engraved air cleaner or somebody doing a Rolex or your gun has some killer and great. You you don't want to just pull out the same old nine millimeter and people go, oh yeah, I got a nine millimeter, or I got a fucking air cleaner, whatever it is. And and all of that stuff just I just love that because I was in metal shop and I was in wood shop and I was in auto shop, and all of that shit sucked for me. I loved, I loved it. I love it. But I'm not good at it. I'm good at clowning on the guys while they're doing it and making them. Laugh. <laughs> so that You're was that, guy? that was well. That was my thing, entertaining while we were sitting there trying to pull the motor out, like you know, <laughs> cracking some jokes, having fun. So I really respect people that can fucking build shit or make stuff. Uh, that is just you know. I mean, whether it be mid-century furniture or an architect uh, like an Eichler or Frank Lloyd Wright or anything, everything about design and inspiration, I want to talk creating, about. Creating, creator. Creating, man, creating. Because, you know, in the world of what we're going into right now of fucking AI and, you know, AI is basically the CNC machine of entertainment now. That's what that's going to fucking be. Oh, man. You I know? know? 
It's scary. For my world, for my world, I'm not worried about it. No, not uh, at all. No, not, not at all. Uh, there's too many. There's way too many things in my head that hasn't been done yet. That AI ain't gonna figure out or be able to do. Maybe in a hundred years, I don't know. But when I say something like that, like that, it's usually half. So fifty years. But still, um, what's coming out? The engravers are coming out nowadays. It's a whole different world. Um, I had uh, some pe three people in one year about seven years ago approached me on doing an en engraver show. Oh, wow. I said, it's, it's not the time. It's not the time. Give it 10 years. And uh, there are three more years, and it's going to be the perfect timing. The new tattoo shows, you know, the engraving. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be, it's, it's really taken off. And uh, it has a lot to do with doing other things rather than firearms, which yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big part. I want to do something totally different. I went to a talk to engraver back in 93 and at a, at a Vegas show. And he was like, this is an engraver show up, in, up north. And I said, this is all great, but I want to do motorcycles and guitar. He's like, what? He looked at me like I was, you know, just had a third head. And then I showed it to him, my piece, years later. He's like, wow. You can do it on other pieces rather than firearms, and it just it just exploded. Now it's everywhere. Uh, Jay Park, I mean, he's blown out of water. Yeah, um, Jay Park. I had him on the show years ago, man. He blew. Did you? My, oh yeah, he blew my mind. Uh, we became friends with his work on Rolexes, man. I yeah. Mean, that shit he was doing with the Grateful Dead and the Dancing Bears <laughs> and the whole fucking case and. I mean, you know, he's doing the guitar picks. He's doing the necklaces. Yeah. He's That's got... where I wanted to go. That direction, right after I took sound class, I wanted to engrave that. But I was again, I was like, I can't do that. I don't want to spend all my all, all my time under a freaking microscope. Yeah. And I'm sure later in the years they're going to be thinking that. I don't yeah. know. Maybe enjoy it. That's just me. But I couldn't do it, man. I need open space. I need uh, I need all that. I have to be like that all day. Yeah, Jay Park, boy, he is the king on the watches, man. He is. Yes, yes, he he's is. amazing. Hats he's off. He's a good player too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope to see you soon. Hey, real quick, do you have an air cleaner or anything sitting around that somebody could see real quick here? If not, I'll put photos up. I well, this is a. Uh, oh wow! Well, there, we there we go. Look at that. Heat shield. Yeah, this was. Yeah. Uh, Look at that, man. That is so good. <laughs> Look at that. I love that's it. The only, that's, that's the only item I have that's mine. I love it. And, yeah, that's, 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 that's cool. I'll post some photos on the Instagram anyway of all the all the epic, famous uh, uh, air cleaners and, and the Brad Pitt bike. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you I for your time you, and thank man. you for asking I can't thank you enough for doing the show and I love your work, brother. Tell everybody where to find you on Instagram. It is at Terrera, T-A-R-R-E-R-A, -R -R -E one. Okay, there you go. Go to his Instagram. And where can they uh, take your class at? Uh, just get a hold of me on Instagram or Facebook. And uh, it, the class is in Costa Mesa. Okay, great. California, Orange County area, uh, 20 minutes away from Disneyland. So okay. while you're here, which I did have uh, the guy uh, took the class, the last guy took the class, he brought his family and they did Disneyland, took a trip up north. Uh, so make a, make a vacation out of it. That's great. How long is the class? A week or something? Three days. Three, three days. days. Okay. Yeah. And, and I was told I don't charge enough. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let's give Hot Dog a shout out too. Long live yeah. Pete. Guy's great. Love, love that guy, man. Hot Dog, he's a great friend of mine. I talked to him about uh, three months ago. Yeah. He says, hey, man, I, I um, uh, call these guys to have a job for you. I said, okay, who's it for? Tim Allen. I went, cool. Oh, fuck. Really? I'll be doing a job, a job for Tim Allen, yeah. Wow, yeah. that's fucking great, man. Yeah, yeah he, 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 every once in a while he pulls through. <laughs> 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 uh, I love you, buddy. Keep rocking. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. All right, man. See you later.